I'm Dr. Timothy O'Donnell, and I would like to welcome you to our Roman pilgrimage, in which we are examining the Lenten Stational Churches of Rome. Today, we will be going to the church of San Vitale, San Vitalis. He was a father who suffered martyrdom along with his sons. The martyrdom that he underwent was a rather cruel one. He was buried in a cistern up to his waist and then was stoned to death. Horrible death, but a courageous witness. At this stage during the Lenten season, it's important that we reflect upon him and the church turns our attention to him. How are we doing with our resolutions? This is a time, it is a season, when we're expected to spend more time in prayer, in fasting, and also in almsgiving, those three great areas. How are we doing with our resolutions? Do we find ourselves weakening? Are we slackening? The church urges us at this time to recommit ourselves once again, particularly to more fervent prayer, making sure that we don't weaken our prayer life during this time. During this season, we're expected to pray more and make even greater efforts. As the great Aristotle once said, friendship needs proximity. How can we be close to Christ if we don't pray to him, if we don't spend time in prayer with him? That's how we draw closer to him. That's how we begin to have the mind of Christ and the spirit of Christ. So let us go now to the church of San Vitale. San Vitale lies 35 steps below the modern bustling street of the Via Nazionale in downtown Rome. As soon as one enters into the portico, which is one of the most ancient features of this particular church, one steps back into history to about the year 400 AD. The church is dedicated to the martyr Vitale, or Vitalis, and also to his sons and fellow martyrs, according to the account, Saints Gervese and Protase. We do not know a great deal about San Vitalis, but certainly he was an early martyr. In all probability, his martyrdom took place just outside the modern city of Milan. We know that he has a titular church in the city of Ravenna and his great devotion to him in that city. This famous martyr points us now on this Friday after the second Sunday of Lent towards the great Friday which the Christians call good, that Friday which commemorates the sacrifice of Christ and his example of suffering. There actually was a letter, although it's of great antiquity, it was attributed to St. Ambrose, but falsely. This letter tells of the history of two martyrs named Saints Gervese and Protase. In this letter, it is claimed that St. Vitalis and his wife, St. Valeria, were the parents of these two martyrs. According to this ancient story, we are told that Vitalis was a soldier who, as a Christian, had encouraged a physician of the city, St. Ursanius of Ravenna, to try to stand firm in the midst of this persecution and offer up his life for Jesus Christ. As we are told from the old Roman martyrology, at Ravenna in northern Italy, the death of the holy martyr Vitalis. He was a father of Saints Gervese and Protase, because he had secretly taken the body of blessed Ursinus to his house and buried it with fitting reverence, Paulinus, a former consul, had him arrested, tortured, and thrown into a deep pit, which was then filled with stones and dirt. By such a martyrdom, he was united to Christ. This governor who was referred to here actually had St. Vitalis racked and then buried alive up to his waist as he was then stoned to death. The traditional date for his feast day is April 28th. St. Valeria, his wife, also was identified as a Christian and we are told was savagely attacked by a group of pagans outside the city of Milan where she died from this cruel abuse. The story also claims that these events occurred during the persecution of the Emperor Nero. Although this is not impossible, a number of scholars believe that it was far more probable to date the time of this martyrdom to the reign of the Emperor Marcus Aurelius. Thanks to this letter, however, which had been attributed to the great Saint Ambrose, 
devotion to these martyrs, St. Gervase Protase, and also the parents, spread throughout the Western Church and eventually came to Rome. In the early 300s, we are told that there was a small oratory which was erected in a low valley between the Viminal and Quirinal hills in Rome. This oratory was originally built in honor of the two brother martyrs. Sometime later, we are told that a very devout Roman matron by the name of Vestina beautified this tiny oratory. It was due to her attentiveness and enrichment of this church that eventually it was transformed into a basilica. Pope Saint Innocent I, who reigned as Supreme Pontiff from 401 to 417, actually was the one who consecrated this basilica and gave it the very early title of Titulus Vestinae, the titular church of Vestina. Later on, however, it was Pope St. Gregory the Great who changed the church's title to San Vitale in remembrance of the father of these two martyrs. This was the last one of the original 25 tituli or titular parishes in the city of Rome. It was to Pope Sixtus IV who eventually rebuilt the entire church and reduced it to a single nave. Sixtus IV reigned as pontiff from 1471 to 1484 and this reworking of the church took place in the year 1475. In the year 1598, the church was entrusted to the Society of Jesus. In the year 1859, Pope Pius IX completely reworked the roof and other parts of the church. Little today remains of the ancient 5th century building, with the exception of the exterior portico and the four columns found there in the facade, the apse. There is, however, a beautiful carved wood door at the front which dates back to the 15th century. The interior is certainly interesting, although it has no columns but has walls painted with landscapes in manner of style. Oftentimes there is an inscription below which refers to the martyrdom represented. We have paintings referring to the martyrdom of Saint Clement. The last one on the right shows St. Ignatius of Antioch who longed for martyrdom and sought to have himself ground by the teeth of lions to make himself the bread of Christ. It is interesting that the painter depicts the lions encountering this great saint in a beautiful meadow. In the background one can see the desolate ruins of the Colosseum in the background which symbolizes the triumph of this martyr over the forces of paganism. In the words of the psalmist, Return, O Lord, save my life rescue me because of your kindness for among the dead no one remembers you in the netherworld who gives you thanks i am wearied with sighing every night i flood my bed with weeping i drench my couch with my tears my eyes are dimmed with sorrow they have aged because of all my foes Depart from me, all evildoers, for the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my plea. The Lord has accepted my prayer. All my enemies shall be put to shame in utter terror. They shall fall back in sudden shame. <laughs> 